It's easy to hate on things and make those seem bad, but is all the hate and negativity surrounding today's 7900X 3D CPU by AMD really justified? In my opinion, no. Sure, the CPU has some weaknesses, but does impress overall. So what makes certain people hate this processor, then? In today's limelight, the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X 3D. In its core, we're still looking at a regular 7900X, but with some changes to it, the most notable one being the addition of AMD's 3D vCache. Price. In June 2023, a 7900X 3D retails for about 540 to 550 US dollars, which is a fair bit more than what our usual regular 7900X can be had for. And same with its direct competitor, the i7-13700K. It's certainly cheaper, but who knows, the price premium of the 7900X 3D might as well just be worth it. Right off the bat, a huge thank you goes out to the kind viewer and supporter going by the name of Marcus Gebhardt. He generously lent me his CPU for my tests. Without him helping me out, there would most likely be no tests and comparisons with the 7900X 3D by me. So anyone appreciating my test basically has to thank a single person, and that is Marcus. Architecture. The difference between the regular 7900X and today's 7900X 3D primarily lies within the cache, meaning the core and thread count of 12 and 24 respectively remains the same. Both CPUs come equipped with two CCDs with six cores each, totaling 12. On one of those CCDs, there's an extra layer of L3 cache, though 64 megabytes of it. So altogether, in total, a regular 7900X sports 64 megabytes, the X3D version on the other hand, 128 megabytes. However, there's one thing we should keep in mind, and that's the overall layout. The 3D B cache is located on only one of the two CCDs. So fundamentally, for gaming, the 7900X 3D therefore acts as a tuned 6-core packed with a bunch of extra cache, whereas the flagship 7950X 3D and one performance tier below today's CPU, that extra cache comes along with a CCD made out of 8 cores. On the flip side, this also means that the 7900X 3D, as opposed to the 7950X 3D, doesn't come with 8 megabytes of L3 cache per core, but almost a respectable 10.7 megabytes. Now, as we know, the 3D V cache is pretty sensitive to heat, which is why AMD lowered their previous max temperature, as seen on the 7900X, from 95 degrees down to 89 degrees Celsius for the X3D part. They accordingly reduced the TDP from 170 watts down to 120. How and if that even affects clock speeds, you'll get to see shortly. Test setup. As far as the motherboard is concerned, I went with the ASRock X670E Pro RS. For the RAM, the Kingston Fury Beast RGB with 32GB, 6000MHz and CL36 timings. All is being cooled by the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2FX 360mm AIO liquid cooler. The graphics card, as usual, goes by the name of ASUS RTX 3090, the Tough Gaming OC version. As a matter of fact, even with that amount of graphics oomph, I certainly ran into a noticeable GPU bottleneck, one that I tried to fix in one way or another for this video. Clock speeds. Glancing over to the X3D model, we have to admit, we are sacrificing quite a bit of clock speeds there. CCD number 1, onto which AMD placed the additional cache, in my case, clocks 425 MHz lower than the X model does. With CCD number 2, the difference is not as extreme. Still, we are talking of roughly 175 MHz loss. In terms of boost clocks, according to AMD, both CPUs should max out at 5.6 GHz. In fact, both tested models managed to exceed that, with the 7900X going even further. In games, I managed to read out overall lower clock speeds on the X3D. Not that those are low by any means, they're just not as spectacular as on the X counterpart. On the other hand, this also leads to one serious advantage here regarding power draw, to which we'll get a bit later into the video. As said, AMD has lowered the TDP from those previous 170 watts 
down to 120. This translates to a jump in the PPT value from 230 down to 162 watts. Performance, productivity. Starting things off with Cinebench R23, the 7900X 3D drops behind the 7900X by 4%. The competition Intel with their 13700K manage a lead of over 12% over the 7900X 3D. The single core performance of the X3D CPU compared to the regular X counterpart is marginally higher, but even here, the 13700K takes the lead by 3%. 7 zip benchmark. Here, that cache beast luckily does not have to shave off much of its performance. It positions itself a proud 11% above the 13700K. Moving on to VRA 5. The 7900X 3D and 13700K go neck and neck here, basically perform identically. The only exception being the regular 7900X that manages to get ahead by another 7%. The Corona benchmark goes to show that the three relevant processors practically perform equally as well and fast. The Blender open data test, however, shows Intel in the lead again by 8% over the X3D CPU by AMD, the latter being about 3% slower than the X part. Handbrake makes the 7900X 3D drop behind more noticeably now. It's 10% slower than the 7900X after all, which happens to be on par with the 13700K. Finally, Vegas Pro 20. Even here, it goes to show that the X3D is 7% slower than its X version. Right in between we find Intel's Core i7. Gaming. Before we dive into these results, I'd like to clearly point out that I ran into a GPU bottleneck. The RTX 3090 simply no longer offers enough graphics horsepower to properly help showcase the differences between those individual CPUs, especially the X3D versions. So there are definitely plans for me to purchase a more powerful GPU for my test system in the future. In the meantime, we'll be sticking to our usual 1080p and 1440p tests, followed by 720p tests even though the latter is rather questionable for today's standards and fairly unrealistic. Thanks for understanding. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Here AMD's Zen 4 CPUs take the lead, doesn't even matter with or without 3D vCache. The 13700K already offering a 5% lower frame rate. Borderlands 3. The two tested X3D beasts are leading that chart. The X3D performing 14% better than the 7900X and even 7% better than the 13700K. The 7900X 3D compared to its X counterpart also happens to deliver 24% smoother 1% lows. Not bad. In Cyberpunk 2077, those comparable AMD and Intel CPUs seem to be offering similar performance. The irregular 7900X on average being 6% slower and also 15% slower in terms of 1% lows. Far Cry 6. Here the 7950X 3D and 7900X 3D take up both top spots. The 7900X 3D outputting an 11% higher frame rate over the X CPU and a marginal lead of 3% over the 13700K. In turn, it must be said that the Core i7 goes to show 12% higher minimum results. Very well, moving on to the title Forza Horizon 5. The 7900X and X3D basically only differ from each other in the 1% lows, which tend to be about 4% higher on the X3D. Intel, on the other hand, is behind by roughly 8%, and that's even 18% as far as lows are concerned. GTA 5 barely can keep up in terms of FPS, which is why close to all CPUs perform equally as well here. Nonetheless, there's a pretty weird deviation of 15% lower 1% lows, measurable compared to the 7900X. Let's move on to Horizon Zero Dawn. Here the 7900X 3D tends to perform a teeny tiny little bit better than the X counterpart. That's enough actually to position itself ahead of the 13700K by 6%. Having arrived in Metro Exodus, the X3D 12 core doesn't do bad, but hardly is any better than a regular 7900X. The 13700K being in the lead by nearly 2% here. Red Dead Redemption 2 shows more interesting results. 
the X3D part as opposed to the XCPU, not only offering 4% higher FPS on average, but a whopping gain of 22% in the 1% low aspect. Compared to that, even the 13700K drops behind slightly, but does fairly well then, as far as averages are concerned. Rise of the Tomb Raider. 3% more is what the 7900X 3D is capable over the 7900X, the 13700K being about 4% slower than the mentioned X3D CPU, and the low department just as good though. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, due to the GPU bottleneck, isn't showing any interesting results whatsoever. Basically, all these really fast CPUs within the chart in that configuration perform equally gaming average FPS of the 1080p and 1440p tests. The first two spots are taken by the X3D versions of those Zen 4 CPUs. Coming from the 7900X to a 7900X 3D, I was able to measure a performance gain of roughly 4% on average. That would be almost 5% in the 1% lows. As a matter of fact, the 13700K on average is behind the 7900X 3D by 3% gaming results of the 720p tests to somewhat work around the GPU bottleneck. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, AMD is 4% ahead of Intel's 13700K. Borderlands 3 clearly shows the X3D CPU gaining a whopping 36% in FPS, that are almost a matching 35% in the 1% lows. Compared to that, the 13700K on average drops behind by 17% and 13% as far as lows are concerned. Cyberpunk 2077 on the other hand especially makes the 13700K appear quite good. It comes out on top over the 7900X 3D by 4%. At least AMD managed to up their performance coming from the 7900X to the X3D by a proud 16% and even 21% in terms of lows. Respect where it's due. Far Cry 6 allows the 7900X 3D to go in the lead by a few percent. If we were to compare against the 7900X though, we no longer should be considering these a few percent. We are talking 26%. Forza Horizon 5 barely allows for more here. Nonetheless, AMD manages to successfully overtake Intel by a noteworthy 8%. GTA 5 no longer outputs any useful results, we can skip that. Things are looking similar in the title Horizon Zero Dawn. There's not much of a difference between these CPUs. The only exception being the 7950X 3D that is capable of outdoing the others. It gets a little bit more boring in Metro Exodus. The only interesting part here being the X3D CPUs appear to be offering slightly worse 1% lows in that game. Red Dead Redemption 2. Thanks to the 3D V-Cache, AMD is able to squeeze out another respectable 8% and that is plenty to now be able to keep up with the Core i7 while additionally outperforming it by 5% in the minimums. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, there's a gain of 7% measurable coming from the X part to X3D. This way AMD is slightly ahead of Intel but they do lose out in the low department by 6%. Lastly, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The GPU bottleneck is going strong here. Still, at least those 1% low results appear to offer some insight. The 7900X 3D now offers 17% smoother FPS as opposed to the 7900X, while Intel compared to the X3D part still is in the lead by 6%. Gaming average FPS of the 720p tests. Basically what we're looking at here is the X3D being 8% ahead of its X counterpart, all while also delivering 9% higher 1% lows. The 13700K practically offers a very similar performance, slightly better minimum results but in turn slightly lower averages. Power consumption and temperatures, and this is where the tables are turning for the 7900X 3D. Without a doubt, it's one of the best all-rounder CPUs within the high-end mainstream tier when considering its high power efficiency. Not only does the 7900X 3D consume 83 watts or 27% less power than the 7900X, but also, and now hold on tight, 226 watts or 51% less than Intel's i7-13700K, at full load, that is. While the 7950X 3D shows a rather unfavorable idle power draw, 
when comparing with the competition Intel. So basically, the 13700K going against the 7900X 3D, that's no longer a topic. But of course, not everyone's going to care about the power draw at full load, which is why I went the extra mile and measured the same thing while gaming. Here the results aren't as insane and dramatic, nonetheless it should be pointed out that for effectively the same gaming performance, the 13700K consumes 82 watts or 16% more power from the wall. I occasionally hear and read some people stating Intel consuming less while gaming, but that doesn't seem to be true. But even AMD's own 7900X draws 62 watts or 12% more power than its X3D version. Without relying on any sort of optimization, both the 7900X and 13700K at full load are quite challenging to cool. Therefore, the temperature of slightly over 80 degrees Celsius on the 7900X 3D is somewhat praiseworthy, albeit that it was only achievable with a 360mm AIO liquid cooler. Conclusion so I don't really understand why some people think so negatively about the 7900X 3D. From a technical standpoint, I see no valid reason. Sure, one could criticize the 6-core layout of the two CCDs, but that's nothing unusual with AMD's 12-core parts, and it doesn't seem to be affecting gaming performance that much or at all for the time being. However, there's a single aspect worth criticizing from my point of view, and that is the price at the end of the day. Without truly coming out on top by a very noticeable margin in games and especially in productive workloads, the i7-13700K by Intel appears to be the better choice as far as the price to performance ratio is concerned. However, and that's a big however, the 13700K's insanely high power consumption compared to the 7900X 3D's should not be underestimated. While the purchase of the X3D CPU might cost you more initially, in the long run that investment could very well turn out to be worth it depending on your electricity rate and region. Which is why I personally am happily trading in a few percent of multi-threaded performance if that means the 7900X 3D runs noticeably more power efficient compared to the regular 7900X. You'd expect that with further optimizations, you could lower power draw and temperatures even further, but that's no longer the case. At least I no longer manage to do so successfully without sacrificing performance. Those, however, that don't mind playing around and fine-tuning things could just grab a regular 7900X and configure it to run more power efficient and save some money that way. By going this route, you are accepting of the fact that you'll end up with slightly worse gaming performance as opposed to the X3D version. At the right price tag, the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X 3D most definitely is worth recommending. Once again, I'd like to thank Marcus Gapard for lending me his CPU for my tests, and thank you so much to you for watching. Until the next one.